Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. My name is Svetlana Donova and on today's program I'm talking to Dr. David Witten. Now, Dr. David Witten is a physicist at the University of Cape Town and he's also one half of PST Sensors. Now PST Sensors is a nanotechnology company based here at the university and it's manufacturing printed temperature sensing labels which are set to change the way that we transport and store foods and medicines. David, we're dealing with a very complicated subject matter here, being nanotechnology. So I want you to start me off by explaining to me what exactly is nanotechnology and how did your interest in this field of physics begin? There's a difference between nanoscience and nanotechnology. Nanoscience is the study of things at a very small scale between atoms and molecules and the everyday world that we look at. So a nanometer is one millionth of a meter and nanoscience is looking at physical processes, chemical processes, and structures at that scale, and nanotechnology is basically using that knowledge. And then you went on to found this division here in the University of, of Cape Town, being the Nanosciences Innovation Center. Tell me about the work that goes on here. Nanoscience Innovation Center I found along with my colleague Margaret Herting that arose out of the work that we were doing originally on the printed silicon and the nanoscale silicon project and we discovered that we actually had two aspects in that we had the basic understanding of the sciences of the physics behind it and we also had the basis of a new technology a technology that the world had never seen before and now let's get to that product that we're actually here to talk about, being the smart sensor label, which is something that has been 10 years of hard work between you and your business partner. Tell me about this product and what it actually, how it works and what it does. A combination of our technology with other, with the technology of, of our partner, Thin Film Electronics, where what we have, we developed with the printed silicon we were looking at various applications in 2010 when we founded the company PST Sensors. Yeah. We discovered that the best thing that the silicon could do was it was an extremely good temperature sensing material. We developed electronic temperature sensors which were based on our printed silicon where we take silicon, part, silicon, turn it into nanoparticles by milling it and then turn it into ink and print it to make silicon again which is our temperature sensor. There are many applications for temperature sensors. Temperature is, as my colleague Margaret that likes to, to keep reminding people, is the second most often measured physical quantity in the world. The first most often is time. So everybody needs to know temperature for everything. Mm -hmm. There are applications in packaging, in logistics, in healthcare, in structural engineering, aerospace, automotive, and we're working with partners through the company with, in all those areas. The temperature sensing label is a partnership with Thin Film Electronics ASA, a Norwegian-based company. They originally started as develop, with the development of their own uh, printed memory. And bringing in other partners, they have a battery partner and they have us as the heart of that system, which is a, the temperature sensor. And what that product is, is a temperature sensing tag which records the temperature or more accurately records temperature excursions of when the temperature has been too high or been too low during transport and storage of vulnerable goods which may be pharmaceuticals, there may be vaccines, there may be foodstuffs, anything which is perishable and is not going to survive. The temperature monitoring market is forecast to go by a significant amount over the coming years. What is it that is driving the demand? And is this also because of a lot of new developments in the technology around this industry? Developments in the technology are certainly making it more practical and probably cheaper in the long run. To actually take a temperature sensing chip and a traditional battery and all the traditional electronics and to try to put that onto every single item is not a practical proposition. There, the packaging would then cost 10 times the price of the product inside. 
with printing, which is a fully additive process, and it can be put through in the sa same processes that you're using to do the packaging, then of course you're coming down to it being ultimately just a few cents on top of the price of the normal package. So it makes it achievable to do it at item level monitoring. What is the biggest challenge in marketing uh, physics research in this country, in South Africa? There is a lot of innovation, or let's say a lot of innovative ideas in South African universities mm -hmm. at all levels, from even from students all the way up to professors. Actually, less innovation the more senior people become because they become set in their ways. That is normal. It's the same with as companies grow, the smaller companies are more, and the younger companies are more innovative than the established corporates. But there, it's difficult because there's a split in South African society at least, and probably also in Europe and the US as well, not so much in the US, between the business side and the commercial side and the technical side, mm -hmm. even within the, within the companies which are supposed to be technology companies. And certainly on a campus like UCT where at one end we have the sciences and at the other end of the campus we have the business and the social sciences. And they don't really talk to each other. So, But it is achievable and it's just a matter of thinking out of the box and keeping up with where can what I'm doing be used? Where is it useful? What's the purpose of this? And how can it change people's lives? And how can it change people's lives, yes. At the moment, where is the majority of funding and investments in um, physics entrepreneurship coming from? At the moment, at the basic technology research and development level, it's coming from organizations at the research side from the National Research Foundation, which is the reasonable funding for academic research. At the innovation side and the technology side, uh, a lot of it is also still state funded from TIA, mm -hmm. the Technology Innovation Agency, who actually funded the first five years of this project. Okay. But there's a very big gap in South Africa. And it's a gap which has its plus and its minus sides. There's no technology VC locally available. Yeah. And the problem with technology VC is they like to keep local. So African companies don't have very much chance of getting technology VC type funding to take it out of the lab and do that early stage research, which we've been doing here with PSD centers and the Nanoscience Innovation Center. That's where the Nanoscience Innovation Center plays a role. The plus side of that is a lot of the early stage technology VC funded companies in the United States, for example, actually were very good investments for the VCs. But as companies, they failed. They weren't sustainable. They were mm -hmm. designed to develop the product and then get a quick exit. So by being forced, in our case, we've been living on revenue for the last three years. Mm -hmm. We've actually had to build a sustainable model for what we are actually doing with the company. And we've had to find where the appropriate market niche is and deal with customers and produce products which people need. We're now coming to the stage and we're closing an investment round in the next month or so. So there may be an announcement later as well where we're actually dealing mainly with a private equity company. Mm. There is some venture capital space in South Africa, which is mainly late stage business venture capital or very early stage private equity. But that technology ven venture capital is actually missing. Do you see that changing, that gap in venture capital for early stage startups and technology innovation? I would like to see it change. I don't think it's going to change very much in the near future. It requires a significant investment, particularly from the private sector. But also, if you look at what's been happening in the other areas of the world, with the recession which hit, started in 2008, but really hit in 2010, there, a lot of the 
high risk investments, the technology investments were also being scaled back as we start to go towards a more bearish market then investment in high risk in technology is the first thing which goes. You've been on quite a journey. Tell me about your biggest lesson, your biggest entrepreneurship lesson. Probably don't give up. Mm. And certainly the second biggest lesson is curiosity driven research is good, it's interesting. But always keep one eye out for if it's actually any point to it, if it's useful. And if it is useful, find a way to make it useful. Now, I can't let you go before I ask you about one of your exciting projects. I believe it's um, what you call um, a printable spacecraft. I don't call it the printable spacecraft. Who calls <laughs> it the printable uh, spacecraft? The person who calls it the printable spacecraft is a lady called Kendra Short at NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Yeah. That was a that is a project which is under the NASA Advanced Innovation Concepts project mm -hmm. to develop new ways of studying other planets and also the planetary atmosphere around the Earth. And the idea is to take rather than just one big spacecraft with sensors on it, mm -hmm. but to actually have a payload of smaller, disposable type spacecraft printed on polymer or even on paper, yeah. which contain sensors and a network together to produce, the, send the information back to the mothership. So they would be dropped, say for example, into the atmosphere on Mars or another planet, or even into the Earth's atmosphere. They're small, lightweight, so, they may land, but they may also just be burned up and re-entry. But at the same time, they send the data back to the mm -hmm. ship. That was run in 2012 as a basic concept study, and it was approved for the next stage. NASA, JPL then have other partners involved. Unfortunately, we aren't directly involved in that because we're not based in the United States. But one of their partners is Xerox Park, the Palo Alto Research Center and they subcontracted to us to produce the temperature sensor for the first concept system, which is going to be just an optical sensor and a temperature sensor. And this is the temperature sensor which is on that printable spacecraft. <laughs> That's it's fantastic. It's going to be then, March 2014 is when the next stage will go through. And the hope is this, this will be in the 20 to 50 year time scale that will actually go into operation. So it's sort of an electronic confetti which is thrown into the solar wind or into an atmosphere to provide distributed data about what's happening. Thank you. That was Dr. David Britton, and this was The Entrepreneurial Edge. Thank you for watching, and see you again next week.